Dr. London was successful in recruiting Corey back to New York, and the duo was among the most active members of Einstein's founding faculty. Both men believed that the College of Medicine, in addition to shaping a top crop of new physicians, should also be a leading medical research institution. Dr. Corey also recruited many freshly minted basic investigators from fields including organic chemistry, neuropathology, neurophysiology, and neuropsychology. In this way, he started innovative multidisciplinary basic research focused on a variety of human ailments, which included Tay-Sachs and Alzheimer's diseases. He was also well aware that one person alone would have too narrow a view and that you had to bring together people with training in different technologies and in different aspects of disease in order to enrich and cross-feed uh, knowledge across disciplines. This was already translational research long before that term had even been coined. Corey did not want anything that was being studied in biology not to have relevance to patients. And this was a revolutionary concept that you could study simple organisms and extract insights to be used eventually to treat patients with uh, new therapeutic agents that could revolutionize their care. What Saul believed in was incorporating areas that traditionally were not in neurology as areas of scientific disciplines. So he brought in neuropsychologists, he brought in statisticians, he brought in people that worked in areas that traditionally were not part of the armamentarium of people working in biomedical sciences. I think his influence and, and what would he be most proud of was that we've continued his tradition of bringing in non-traditional people to work in the field. And because of that, we've gotten explosive insights into biological mechanisms of complex as how the brain developed, how it evolved, how it responds to disease, et cetera.